Okay, sit still. We started. Sit still, Kurt. I know. That was it. That was us going, (laughs) no, Kurt. I can't do that. (laughs) I am not going to swivel. Oh, we're good. We're just starting. I'm (laughs) sorry. Holy cow. (laughs) I hope it just starts like this. (laughs) Jacob's like, it will. It has. (laughs) (laughs) All right, go. All right. Say something. Let's just all lean in and go. Hello. (laughs) Hello. All right. Three, two, one. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Trey. Hey, Kurt. Hello. This is is the weirdest awkwardest show ever. We've been sitting here for a few minutes, but we decided to now, once the camera's rolling, to actually. You guys think this is easy to do, but it's just one another. That's exactly. Just jump into something. (laughs) But hey, guys. Gotta have a beginning. Hey guys, what's up? We're here. Yes, we're, we're excited to be here. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year. We're uh, we're going to be starting a new book. Uh, you guys are here, so hopefully you know that. We're I gonna, read it before. Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. You <laughs> heard it. Kurt was challenging us to memorize the whole book of Romans. I haven't, to be clear. No, right, right. <laughs> we all should. Yes, you were challenging us should. as a group. I'm working on eight. I'm working on <laughs> just eight. Guys. Chapter eight. Yeah, just chapter eight is my favorite. Oh well, I'm I'm like. I really just want to jump in because I'm so fired up about it. But I, I, we're supposed to banter a little bit first and do those kind of. That's what fair, you're supposed to do in a good podcast. Oh, so yeah. Yes. Like maybe we'll keep it Roman centric. How about that? Okay. Like instead mm-hmm, of like, mm-hmm. I don't figure you guys as New Year's resolutions kind of folks, or maybe you've already broken. Them Sometimes the I didn't really. I don't have any think about it goals. too much this year for whatever reason. I don't know. Yeah. So did you say smart goals? I have no smart goals. For <laughs> yeah, this year. I need to be more smart. proactive on that kind of thing. Specific, measurable, achievable. Relatable, relatable. Nope. T is and time realistic. 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 Yes. And time time specific. Timeable. Timeable. Yes. <laughs> no, I, don't I don't have any smart goals for this year. No, I don't either. I, I I love New Year's because it's like the fresh start, the beginning, yes. and all that stuff. I really like a good new fresh start. Get back into some ha- good habits, things like that. Whatever. Do you have like I, a fresh planner that you. I, I don't really some, do paper calendars. No. Just some <laughs> hard hitting <laughs> podcasting right now. I mean, this is a challenge to everybody. This is it. Memorize this Romans. Is you guys are here. <laughs> or just These don't do gems, resolutions. Guys. These are the gems. <laughs> Read Romans and then all of whatever. What's our stuff. Roman-centric banter? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so why do you love Romans? Oh, gosh. <laughs> why do you love Romans? <laughs> well, you were sharing a little nugget right before we started, about eight. Yes. So I read chapter eight almost every day. I'm not going to lie and say every day because there are some days that I miss. But most every day I read chapter eight because it like jazzes me. Like it is so hopeful. Yeah. And there is therefore no no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Like it just. It's hard to have a miserable day if eight is that. in your heart and yes. mind. All, you know, and then it ends with nothing, nothing can separate, separate us. us. Yes. Yeah. It is just yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's my favorite. So that's the only thing. That's the only part of the Bible you read every day. It's just <laughs> that, Romans no, 8. I have you know, a, there's I have a, a lot more in here. Plan, other things is, as well. I'm trying to memorize Romans 8, so I read it every, read single, every single day. day. Yes. 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 That's very yes. cool. That is a good challenge. Everybody, that's a great challenge. Try to memorize Romans 8. Yeah. That's, man, it's so It good. will jazz you. Why do I love <laughs> Romans, though? I mean, it is it is kind of the whole story of the Bible in one book for the most part. It, yeah. it It's the gospel laid out really, I think, brilliantly and really well from beginning to end. If if I, and we were just kind of talking about this, if you had to say, give me one book of the Bible and only one, mm. there's so many obviously that are amazing. Yes, yes. we know that, and I'm not, but Leviticus, I would pick Leviticus. <laughs> no, yeah. you it's got to be Romans, right? Yes. I mean, it just, I, I think it has to be, um, just because of the way that it is really the whole story of the redemptive history of the gospel in a book. So. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just, yeah, and, it's, and it gets so practical at the end, too. It's not just, it's deep and heady for sure, but exactly. it's very practical as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love it's it, so too. Good. Um, and what do you love about Romans? I, well, it's like there's all the quotable quotes. Yeah. <laughs> like you all get the, to a, yeah, you know, look, I wrote down all the key yeah. verses, and you, it was oh, like, man, where do you yeah. end? Right, and, yeah. and Romans, the Romans road, like if you're trying to lead someone That's right. uh, yeah. in, the, in the plan to salvation, you go, yeah. well, I could just use Romans for the most part right. and go all the way through it, and um, just, just like some of the... I think what's what's cool is you're connecting with all right, it's Paul. We're gonna get to who wrote it and all that in a minute, but Paul wrote it. Right. Um, and then his his conversion story and the way in which he lays out the gospel so clearly has affected like some of the people I just love, love, love in church history, right? right. Like Luther and Wesley oh, yeah. and Augustine. August, Augustine yeah. I was gonna say Augustine, but whoever, Augustine. What, whichever, 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 I don't know. Potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> right. But all like those guys were uh, Calvin, like these guys yeah. were were moved to the point of of changing their lives right. Right? because of what they read about the work of God through Christ Jesus in the book of Romans. And I thought, man, if it's that effective all through the centuries, like it goes right. on for the last 
two thousand years, this book has not lost any luster. Right? It's, right. It's, it's yeah. still uh, an incredible story of God's goodness and faithfulness, His justice, but yeah. yet His uh, reconciliation with yeah. us. Exactly. Just, oh. I feel like reading the Book of Romans is like sitting across the table from a doctor that you really, really, really trust and that you love, and them like pushing the tissues closer to you and going, "Steph." Your condition is way worse than we thought. Like it's really, really bad. And as you like tear up, they're like, "But the remedy is amazing." And it's better than like you the thought remedy. It was. Like you will literally <laughs> yeah. after the remedy, it will, you yeah. will literally be a new person. Like so you're it, saying the doctor would have good news. Yes, but it's <laughs> devastating to the yeah, flesh. Like that kind of is. This, it is devastating. And that to really the flesh. is the message of Romans that it's it's like sin is worse than you thought it was. Exactly. And, and grace is better than you thought good. it was. Right. Yes. Grace is better, and That's and the exactly the life right. of Jesus is even greater than you could ever imagine. The gospel is yes. better. It, it is. It's devastating and then wonderful and beautiful. And Absolutely. Paul in his, man, just his brilliance. I know we're kind of jumping ahead, but the brilliance of the way that he writes, the way that he argues. I think I think Romans is sort of the letter that almost answers so many of, of the questions we have as Christians, especially new believers. And yeah. as you're digging in, you can read so many other books. And Romans is kind of the book you would go to if you're going, but why mm-hmm. did Jesus have to do that? Or exactly. why was my sin this? Or wh- whatever. Because right? right. how or, Paul, what, or what was going on? He explicitly asked those questions. He gets and then down answers. into it. He does. Yes. He literally or asks even why. even super like, how, yeah. like practical, like how do I as a Christian relate to my government right Right? like romans 13 or what about people who who uh, have never heard of christ yeah like i've never heard the name of christ what how can that be fair like romans 1 answers Mm -hmm. that and so like all of those big questions and the little nitty-gritty ones and how do the great deep doctrines of christianity actually affect my everyday practical life because I, I know there are some people who would look at a thing like Romans and, well, that's just all head knowledge and right. it's just all deep Theological, doctrine. Blah, blah, and blah. it is, and again, but man, the way that he is able to really in chapter 12 and on yeah. be able to go, okay, because of all that, and he actually starts it in view of God's mercy, right. <laughs> all this stuff, you know, yes. live this way and, and right. how practical it gets. Um, man, because the deep doctrine matters and it does shape the way that we actually mm-hmm. practically live. Yes. And I think Romans, better than any other book, which really opens that up to us. So. Yeah. Yes. And so we were uh, in our before the Advent podcast series, we did Colossians, and we were talking about how, now what was that, uh, four, five chapters, six chapters, whatever it was. Four? Colossians is four. <laughs> four chapters. Yes. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a couple of paragraphs. We didn't have six weeks, but it was four. Yeah. But it was like yes. a couple of paragraphs of, of kind of theology, and it was like, right. all right, here's how you apply it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Ephesians, we've talked about how it's just, just a couple similar, of chapters yeah. of, maybe three chapters of theology yeah. or doctrine, and then it's like, here's how you apply it. Right. Romans is like, Eleven, <laughs> really, yes. eleven yes. deep doctrine right. chapters, and then starting yeah. at 12, 13, 12. 14, 15, 16, Which, by the way, yeah. too, something about amazing about really all of Paul's letters are very long for the ancient world, mm-hmm. and this one and like First Corinthians. I mean, these are, are his sentences. massive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sentences. But Paragraphs. I mean, a typical letter that you're going to send back in the in the ancient world is going to be a couple paragraphs, right? You know, because mm-hmm. it needed to be short, and like somebody's going to get it and read it in front of people, right? I mean, these are like this is what, how long does it take you to read Romans? An hour, hour, hour and a half? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of, but this but is, worth I mean, it, guys. it's just, worth it. <laughs> it is, it's like his manifesto of the gospel. Yes. I mean, it's yes. such a thick and dense thing, but yeah. beautiful. And like yeah. you said, even for the ancient world, this is a very long letter. Oh, very right? like, This is right. yes. very intentional very in yes. what he's trying to get. What he's but to remember to that it is a letter from a pastor right. not just a, to his church. It's not just like, hey, treatise. I want to wax eloquently mm-hmm. on doctrine <laughs> and all the things, but like, yeah. I'm talking to people who have real questions. Mm-hmm. People who are, like are suffering under division in the church, like I'm answering real practical things yeah. that are going on because I, he's a shepherd, like he wants to pastor this flock. And mm-hmm. so yep. I love Romans and remembering this is a letter from a pastor to his people. Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. good. And so like, let's just jump in right there on some context, because um, I, I like when we read books of the Bible that we understand why, it's a, first of all, it's a letter. Right. It's not just a book. Like It's a letter. Which is epistle. Right. I mean, that's right. Yeah. So that's epistle, epistle is a letter. Apostle wrote an epistle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he writes a letter to the churches, like mm-hmm. groups of churches in Rome. Yeah. Um, maybe, we don't know all the exact stuff here, but so we're going to speculate on some stuff, but maybe five or six seven house churches. So right. we're not talking yeah. about giant cathedrals or even buildings like we have today, just right. homes yeah. where churches yeah. would meet or maybe synagogues. There were some synagogues there. Um, right around 55, late, somewhere right. in there, yeah. it's written. Mm-hmm. He's, he's pro- Paul, we know the author's Paul. He says it's Paul, even... Uh, First word of the letter. 
Huh? First word of the letter. Yes. Paul. 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 One one. Paul. <laughs> um, but uh, even the even non-believing um, Bible commentaries and professors pretty much agree it's Paul. It's pretty pretty clear it's Paul. Right. Yeah. Um, probably written his third missionary journey, right? right? So he's maybe in Corinth. Well, we're pretty sure he's in Corinth mm-hmm. based on the end of the letter when he starts thanking people. Yeah. We, we know some of those people, uh, um, Erastus and... Yeah. Right. Um, who is it? Uh, whoever wrote the wrote actually writing the letter? Tertius. 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 Yes. Tertius. And even Phoebe Tertius. is from right outside yeah. of Corinth. Phoebe delivers from, the letter. Yes. She's the that funny looking word. Sin. 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 Cray. Sin. Cray. Sin. Cray. Okay. Sin. Yeah. Cray. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Yeah. So pronounce word. it with confidence and pretend it's right. Sin. <laughs> Cray. That's right a preacher outside. tip. You just yeah. say words <laughs> in the Bible right. with confidence, and everybody's like, "Oh, you know, I got to pronounce that." Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no. Probably from uh, like a th- maybe a three month winter in yeah. Corinth, and so he's writing it to the churches in Rome. Now, why is he writing it to the churches in Rome? Why would he need to write this? He's never been to Rome. Yeah. Right. Rome. The Roman churches are either started by, you know, Catholic uh, tradition would say Peter. We don't really have a lot of information that says that necessarily. Right. But um, we know there were Romans at Pentecost. Pentecost. Mm-hmm. So Acts yes. two. We see that when the people started speaking in all these different languages, some heard their dialect from Rome, and that's yeah. mentioned clearly there. So potentially, some folks from Pentecost went back to Rome, mm-hmm. took the gospel back there. Probably Jewish converts, right? So that would make the church they are very Jewish, which right. is important, right? As we get started, yeah. So why would why is, why do you think Paul's writing this letter to the churches in Rome? What's going on? Well, certainly, like you said, having its roots with which all of Christianity kind of begin with the Jewish people right. of Jewish tradition and Jewish faith who become Christians and then spread out around, you know, the Roman world. And then this is so, you know, mid to late 50s where, okay, so Christianity has been around for 20, whatever, 30, right, 20 years mm-hmm. or so. Um, obviously, in that time, it has grown and spread a little bit wherever right. it's been. And there's many, and probably mainly at this point, Gentile Christians, Mm -hmm. lots and lots of Gentile Christians and Jewish tradition Christians. And there's going to be this, and just like we talked about a lot in Colossians, where there's sort of this mix of culture now and way of doing things and way of thinking about things Mm -hmm. and understandings even of the gospel. And Paul has, like you said, he hasn't been there yet. Um, We don't know exactly who had been there as far as like the great teachers, whether it was Peter or Paul, Mm -hmm. whoever, like we're not sure. So... Paul's writing this letter, certainly on on one hand, just to kind of bring in, I need to make sure you guys understand clear and good doctrine about Mm -hmm. the gospel, right? And he's hoping, uh, you know, and we know he does, make his way to Rome um, at this point, but he hasn't been there yet. So, Mm -hmm. you know, he's sending this ahead of himself to kind of go, man, like, I'm probably hearing about some of the disputes, some of the disunity, Gentiles and Jews, or even even amongst Gentiles and Gentiles and Jews and Jews or whatever, I'm sure. Gosh, I mean, even in the, the world today, how many disputes are there about doctrinal things Christian oh, yeah. within yeah. the it's church. why we have denominations. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so why, why were they, do you have, do you have some background on maybe why they were arguing, why the Jews and Gentiles maybe weren't in unity? We, we do read in, is it 13 and 14, we're going to find the, this, this like, really want you to be unified brothers, right? right? Like there's right. the weaker and the stronger and we, yes. we can kind of maybe pinpoint who those might be, but yeah. there's definitely a problem. Why is there a problem? Well, there was about five years where the Jews were kind of Claudius kicked him out because yeah. there was disputes about this Christos, <laughs> right? And so he was like, "Okay, there's a dispute. Y'all get out." You know, let's Claudius make being the Roman, the emperor, Roman emperor. Or, right. Yes. So he kicked him out for about five years, and when he died, they were able to come back. Well, five years is a long time to be gone mm-hmm. from a church for a 15 year old church. Yeah, right? like it's <laughs> right. It's a very young church yes. with Jewish leaders who are and now booted. Now they got to go. Yes, and so now Gentiles take over. And the Jews come back and they find it completely different than yeah. what they thought church should be. And so... What are these drums doing in here? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where are the hymns? <laughs> yeah. um, and so there was big time division. And so like, where does the law end and grace begin? Like all of these questions that they didn't know. What about what about all, the kosher? <laughs> like what about eating kosher food? And, mm-hmm. and so... Yeah. Paul needed to answer the, these questions mm-hmm. so that he could bring unity. And also, he wanted to he wanted Rome to kind of be his base of operations because he wanted to go he wanted to go west. Go like, west, like, young man. Go, yeah, he wanted to go west. He had yeah. already you know ministered to those churches in the east, and and he wanted that to be his base of operations to move on to the west. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he needed them to be solid. Yeah, <laughs> specifically, he says, "I'm headed to Spain." Yeah, right. And I want you guys to kind of be my stopping point. I yes. want you to send me out. I want to right. come and preach the gospel to you. I want to be there with you. 
was he share fellowship together? Yeah. Right. And then I want you to Encourage like basically another, yeah. give me money and help me get right? to Spain so yes. I can keep spreading the gospel, which at the time was the end of the world. That's exactly right. right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Spain's going 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Spain was a big body of water after <laughs> that. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so the division then, um, we were joking about drums and stuff, but uh, the Jewish church, uh, the, the church as it begins in Rome, if, if it's right after Pentecost, and let's say it's for 15 years, the Jewish leaders, more than likely it had a very Jewish vibe. Like you're saying, right. they probably sure. did eat kosher foods. They were, they were really attentive to uh, the Torah, the, the yes. 613 laws of the mm-hmm. Old Testament. Um, while they believed in Christ, they didn't maybe necessarily fully understand that freedom in Christ. Yes. Right. Uh, so they're coming with their Jewish background. Right. Um, what was, oh, Sabbath. They were very yes. adamant about. Right. Uh, All the laws Sabbath. pertaining to Sabbath. There was one, oh, circumcision. Circumcision. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. And so this first section really is where Paul, you're going to see a lot of that where Paul is, um, really he's leveling the playing field. Exactly. <laughs> very much so in this first section, and I say section, really chapters one through four, what we're hitting on mainly in this first series of Romans. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, we're going to be doing Romans all year in four different series. Mm-hmm. So this first one here in February, um, yeah, where we're going to see Paul really level the playing field between Jews and Gentiles. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're all sinful, something he's going to talk about. Right. Where we, we all need grace, and we're all sinners. And we're all sons of Abraham through right. faith. We're going to get there in, in chapter Not four. Not through so. all the works that right. you think yep. are, are working to make you mm-hmm. righteous. Which just takes the Jew and Gentile thing and just goes, okay, all of us, right? Kind of, again, just levels that playing yeah. field. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, and that helps him set up the rest of the, the letter for him yes. to be able to share the gospel yeah. more clearly. So we have this dispute. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul's going to be very clear about the gospel. Mm-hmm. He wants everyone to understand like when we get together, this is what it is, so that you'll be unified, know yeah. what the gospel is. He hadn't been there yet, right? We don't think, and so that's probably the the reason he takes such a long time in the beginning to yeah. give. Here's very clearly what I believe. Yeah. Right. Maybe other people are saying some other stuff, but here's what I believe, mm-hmm. and then here's how to act if that's the case. Yes. And that's from Romans twelve on. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we'll that you know in our second. Uh, Roman series? Is that when we tackle 9 through 10, 9 and 11? The second one will be 5 through 8. Okay, so our third series our third one, probably August, fall, September is what we're shooting for. We'll be looking at those really 9, 10, 11. exciting <laughs> Romans 9 to 11. Not controversial at all. Not at um, all controversial. But anyway, so that'll be fun too. But that's so Paul, Pray for us, please, as we, and as read, we navigate read and this this year. Yes, yes. read and yeah. study. So why in the world would this be important today? I mean, you know, Oh, there's no division in the church these days, <laughs> for heaven's sakes. Oh, everybody knows the gospel perfectly, and <laughs> right. there's zero division in the church. So okay, This right. is irrelevant. It's no, like... really exactly the opposite, right? I mean, right. we need to... Well, I, I've said this before to our church. Just, I need to hear the gospel all the time. I know I'm a pastor, but good gracious. I need to hear the gospel yeah. daily, and so, right. do you, and so do all of us. We need to share it with one another. Romans is, again, it's the gospel, and so, I mean, why do you read Romans 8 every day? Because mm-hmm. it's the me. gospel, <laughs> but it is, right? Romans 8 one yes. is the gospel. There's no so condemnation good. for those in Christ yes. Jesus. So it's like, man, the, that, that's the most relevant thing in the world. The gospel never unrelevantizes itself. I'm making up words. <laughs> that's now. right. That's a good Because one. good gracious, <laughs> it is always applicable. It is yes. always necessary. It's always good and rich. Um, right. It and should yet, never become common. It's just like, never. Right. Well, yeah. well. And it reminds us, it, do, it reminds us of who we are. Yeah. There is nothing we can do to add to the gospel. There's nothing. Yes. No one is righteous. No, not one. And so, and it reminds us that the only remedy is not how much money we give. Those are good things. It's not how, how you know, all the good works that we do. It is only through the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ mm-hmm. that we are made right with God mm-hmm. and that we can have life. Yeah. He reminds us who we are on both sides, right? Exactly. Like how how, roll, how roll sinful bad. and broken we are, <laughs> yeah. dead in sin, and then yes. who we are in Jesus but and not condemned of, yeah. and adopted. glorified, adopted, yes. right? all these beautiful yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Words we don't like to talk about, are they, they slap us in the face in Romans 1. Right, like yes. the wrath of God. Well, yeah, right. You want to talk yeah, about that? It's, I know. God is he loving. Sounds mean. Exactly. Yeah. He is. It's yeah. loving. That's loving. Exactly right. And it humbles right. us. Yeah. Like it gets us to a place of again being kind of introduced to ourselves mm. as we read this letter right. and so many of Paul's letters. But I think Romans just gets right to the core of it very quickly. <laughs> Romans mm-hmm. one eighteen through thirty two. One of the most just um, hard but poignant and deep and profound passages in Scripture mm-hmm. where we see the nature of our sinfulness and right. how ugly it really is, mm-hmm. how treasonous our sin is against God. Right. He doesn't just say you're bad. He's, he, he tells you why yeah. 
you worship idols. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like you are you are twisted in your thinking. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. your thinking has, has been darkened. You're blind. Yeah. Like you reject all of these God's things. truth. Yes, yeah. right. You, you worship the created the creature <laughs> yeah, instead the of the creator. creator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is what you do. And if we look hard enough, we yeah. go. Yeah, it's all of us for sure. But even if somehow you felt like you escaped all of Romans <laughs> right. one, I'm a good person. right? You get, but then the very last verse, I think it's the last verse, which it goes. But even if you don't like correct those who do those things, you're just as guilty. Yeah. Yes. Like, exactly. Right. Wait, what? Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. Like, no. Nope, if you're not all in, yeah, then there's a part that needs to be fixed, reconciled. Yeah. Um. Oh man. So good. It's hard not to jump ahead to other weeks. I, I know. I know. We're sort of on introduction so this week, but good. Yeah. But I, I, I did want to at least start there though, because I, I want you guys as you are. Uh, doing this with us. I want you reading Romans with us. Yes, we want you yes. reading Romans with us. Um, and so when we're preaching it on Sunday, we're preaching something you've already read, yeah. and then you're going to read it again that week and 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 see how not only it just applies to your life, but the richness of it, right? right. Like the reason we get excited about it and want to jump all over the place and talk about all of it and get to Romans 8, where like the beauty <laughs> right, of it right. is because... wait till May for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because like if... if if we could plead the blood of Christ with you, like just kidding, yeah. like he's just that good. Yeah. Like he's just that good. Yes, there is condemnation. Yes, there is uh, God's wrath upon uh, sin and the sinner. But, but now, actually, yes. is the phrase. Exactly. But now, that doesn't exist for those who yeah. have faith in Christ. Right. You know, he has done it, he has done the work. Yeah. Uh, now, he's given us the, the gift of the Holy Spirit to live. And obedience, yeah. um, the obedience of faith, as yeah. Paul calls it at the beginning and the very end of the book. Um, and so, like, you know, it's rich in that it's fun to know, but it's rich in that it just gives you such fullness as we live it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not rules and regulations that we have to do. We can't wait to do them because of their, you know, they keep us reconciled with, with Christ, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we'll get to big words like justification, what does that mean? A big legal word. Yeah. And then Paul follows that uh, with a word of reconciliation, something much more uh, relational. So we have like this legal rightness mm-hmm. with God and then this reconciliation, this relational rightness with God. Yeah. Um, not, they don't, they don't exist separately, but right. together, but yet yeah. they still are two different pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, so we'll get into some of that. Yeah. Three, four, and five, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, Romans 8, you said your favorite. Uh, do you have like a favorite? Just 8, if you had to pick a verse in Romans. A favorite verse? Yeah, our section. Or um, hmm. I mean, Romans, yeah, Romans 8, but Romans 3, 21 through 26. Yeah, okay, just the most important passages of... <laughs> One of, if not yeah. the most important paragraph in I've the Bible. A, I've got to write a paper on it this, the, this I mean, semester. <laughs> it is, because it, it's it's the paragraph where the first three chapters up to 320 is yeah. Paul, is the surgeon going, hey, you got cancer? Right. Um, and it's, all these other things as well. There's absolutely yeah. nothing you can do about it, except this well, one thing. 321 here, is in, but now. Yeah, and 321 yeah. is maybe the greatest but in the <laughs> <Yeah>. entire Bible <laughs> right. of this all changes because of this. Yes. Now a righteousness from God has been revealed, mm. right? In the person of Jesus Christ for all who have faith in him and we're justified in him. And he goes on to talk about like how the cross becomes sort of the, the intersection of God's justice and mercy mm-hmm. and how it all works. Out. Like how does any of this make sense? Yeah. It's that paragraph. Right. Um, I think that paragraph I would say maybe is sort of the thesis of the whole book that kind of everything springs out of, mm-hmm. yeah. both the what comes before and what comes after. So yeah. Goodness gracious, it is another another passage. If you want to commit to memory, that's one to do. <laughs> Three twenty-one yeah. through twenty-five. Because if you want to share the gospel 26. with somebody, there it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. He justifies Good. the one. I who have has it faith. circled in my Bible as just mm-hmm. like, what's that say? The, the gospel. gospel. <laughs> it's in my Bible. And it just says the gospel. What does I say? That the, paragraph. The most important paragraph in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. Romans three twenty-one <laughs> through twenty-six. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one for me right now, um, and it's just you know. Uh, the season we're in, my mom had a massive stroke in December and, yeah. uh, you know, she's not able to communicate right now and has lost uh, mobility on her whole right side of her body anyway. And, and, um, this, uh, as we've been studying, preparing for Roman, uh, to, to go through this in Romans, Romans five, um, three to five. Yeah. And I know you, as soon as I start reading, it, you're going to go, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this has been just heavy on us. And not only that, but that being just sharing in the glory of God, we have peace with God. It's like, not only that, if that wasn't good <laughs> enough, right. he says, but we also boast in our sufferings 
mm-hmm. knowing that suffering produces endurance. Yeah. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and then hope does not disappoint us. Yes. And I can keep going, but I, we just our little catchphrase has been, hope does not hope disappoint. Does not disappoint. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, yes, there's a reason for the sufferings, and yes, like they're hard, but yeah. but but they give you endurance. Right. And then that endurance is so important because the more you endure, the greater the character is built in you. Right. And if character just being great is not all that there is, because that gives us hope. And that yeah. hope is something that does yeah. not bis- disappoint. Why? Because the hope is in Christ. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's in that resurrection. It's in that, um, that this is not all there is, right? right? Like there's something so much better and greater. Sorry about that. But like that's where we have been. Yeah. Um, and the other day I was just reading, I was like with my mom in the hospital, our shepherd center. And um, we had done all the games we were going to do for the day. And she was kind of done and tired. And I said, can I read, can I read this to you? And, and uh, she's not been emotive yet. Yeah. And I read this section to her and she just wept. Is the <laughs> you make me cry, man. I mean, I, but, but really, is this not the most applicable thing in the world when you read something like that, right? Yeah. Like the most relevant to life. Don't right. ever tell me that this is not relevant to our lives and where you can have and feel and know the hope that Paul's talking about. In 2023, going through yeah. what you're going through, what your family's going through, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Just There's the a, Word of God being active yes. and alive. Yeah. Hope is so much greater. That's right. The hope in Christ is so much greater than anything yeah. you know, we have on this earth. Yeah. And these things are nice. Like We have some neat things. <laughs> <laughs> but man, Jesus is just... And that may sound like a bumper sticker, but Jesus is just it. He is everything. Yeah. And He's done everything. And so um, Paul certainly thought Jesus was a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. He felt like, uh, and and he calls himself maybe the last of the apostles, right. potentially. Yeah. Um, so let's just let's read if, if you have one, uh, mm-hmm. one, be one through seven. Just get the kind of just the intro of of who Paul is, what he's saying at the beginning of the letter. You and want then, me to read it? Or? Yeah, sure. Well, you you got the NIV. Well, we got all I'm kinds ESV. of stuff here. Yeah, I got the NRSV. Go for it. I'll read. Yeah. Uh, one one through seven. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who, as to his human nature, was a descendant of David, and who, through the spirit of holiness, was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. That's one sentence, by the way. Yeah. Till, till the very end. <laughs> Paul, Paul doesn't like periods. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. But let's just let's break some of that down for a minute. I mean, just grace and grace. As I was and peace reading it, there's so many I'm just like so many verses I just wanted to be like, gosh. You know? Yeah. Like, yes. Um, but just so we can get who Paul, who Paul is. And because yeah. we are, we are much like Paul. I mean, other than maybe the apostle part right. as, a, as a, mm-hmm. an official, I mean, as an office, um, he, he calls himself a servant, mm-hmm. a, a doulos, a, a slave to Christ. Long servant, yeah. Right. Like we're not, yeah. we don't belong to the world anymore. Right. We have a new master. We have a yeah. new king and that's, yep. that's Christ. And so we're Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. He uses Jesus Christ, not like first and last name, but he uses both, uh, Jesus, the um, his given name, right. and then Christ mm-hmm. being being Messiah, right. which means the anointed, anointed one. one or yes. the king. So really, you could say, you know, Paul, uh, a slave, or or Trey, Kurt, Stephanie, a slave of Jesus the King, yeah. right? Jesus, our new King, mm-hmm. and then called. Like we have a, a calling, a vocation, yes. right? You've been called, and for Paul to be an apostle, yep. and set apart. And we set apart as Old Testament language, yeah. right? As being what? Holy, Holy. and, and, and yeah. um, consecrated, set apart. Mm-hmm. And so that's who, when we surrender our lives to Christ and choose to, to make Him Lord, we bow our knee to Christ the King, yep. then we're saying that we're set apart now to, right. for a, a calling for the gospel of God. 
with the gospel. The gospel. Right. You take God. over now. Gospel. Yeah. Of God. Well, and I know we're going to talk more about the gospel next week, so I don't want to jump ahead too much. But mm-hmm. just that, I mean, the gospel. It's not an uncommon word in in the Roman world. Mm-hmm. They knew what gospel is. Just good news. That's what right. it means. Um, they were used to an emperor probably sending gospel good news by a messenger. Right. Mm-hmm. To the we've world. conquered you know, another. Yeah, city we conquered something. Yeah. Or uh, <laughs> yeah. as often, a, a yeah. child was born. Like yeah. if, uh, right. if the Roman emperor had a kid, yeah, yes. someone was born. gospel. It's good news. Um, but he says the gospel, mm-hmm. the not a gospel for one thing. So it's not some. It's the gospel of God. Mm-hmm. It yeah. belongs to Him. Like yeah. This is His gospel, His story, His Evangelion. You said yes. that word. Mm-hmm. So this is the gospel of God. Um, and again, I think. That is Romans. It's Romans is the gospel of God, just the whole story. Mm-hmm. Of now, is this a new story? Is this a brand new story? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. he says yeah. it came the gospel it, he promised, he promised, promised beforehand yes. through the prophets mm-hmm. and the holy scriptures. This is getting his Jewish Jewish audience to lean By in. The, way, right. the gospels in the Old Testament, people. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's all right. over it, <laughs> right? And yeah. then he says the gospel concerning his son. Yep. And this is where. The Gentiles would now be listening, going, okay, wait a minute, so Caesar has a son? No, no, no. Yeah. God has a son, his right. son, and his son is Jesus, who was descended from David. This is all according to the scriptures, right. prophecy being fulfilled yeah. according to the flesh. That was through David. Uh, and then he's what? He's declared mm-hmm. um, to be son of God. So not only is he the son of God, he's then declared, mm-hmm. almost yes. like a uh, king. king um, Which had lots of coronated. Jewish connotations, like back in Daniel, and uh, the son of God was mm-hmm. yeah. huge. And that's what Jesus called himself mm-hmm. most. And the seal son of that of sonship, that that declaration of him yeah. as the son of God was his resurrection from the dead. Yes. Yeah. Right? Who he else did that? Opens right? it up this <laughs> right. way. Like, this is, how, how <laughs> right. do we even know that? Yes. That's true. Because mm-hmm. he rose from the dead. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he died. I was reading that with Thea, my daughter, last night. Um, Jesus, in her little Bible story book, that Jesus died. And we started to talk about that. And she, oh, man, I didn't know he died. You know, we hadn't really talked about <laughs> right. it. Right. And then she's like, well, because well, she knows the story of him walking on water. And she goes, well, how's he going to walk on water now? <laughs> and I turned the page and I said, look. He came back to life, right? We kept reading her story. Yeah. Like, and she was like, what? He did you know, this amazing <laughs> yeah. truth. But that's what Paul's doing, right? He's like, mm-hmm. that's just how he's declared to be the son of God. That It's not amazing that somebody dies on a Roman cross. That's right. pretty common. Yeah. Right. But he came back to life, you know? Yeah. The resurrection of Jesus being the central point of our faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The gospel of Caesar, the, the good news of Caesar would have been, yeah, there's another son. Or yeah, we, you know, we've, we've conquered that. We got victory there, but it's all temporary. Yeah. Exactly. This is like the gospel of God. Yeah. This is like the one above Caesar. Like, <laughs> yeah. So this is this is some some powerful stuff. Who who, who can uh, be resurrected from the dead? Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now that's the new word, Lord, yeah. coming in. Yeah. Which again, Gentiles would hear that in a very, um, uh, like a, a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So they'd go, okay, Lord is what we would call Caesar. Right. right. That's what his name is. Caesar is Lord. Is Lord. Name. Very common phrase. Yeah. Right. And so now we have Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. So we're, we're getting some a little bit of rebellion through here, too. <laughs> and then what did all of that mean for us through him? We have now received grace, which keros just means like a, mm-hmm. a gift. Like right. We received this gift. Yep. Uh, and for, for uh, Paul, apostleship, to bring about uh, the obedience of faith. Mm-hmm. The obedience of faith. So it's not just that you believe in something. Yeah. There's an obedience that comes with that yeah. faith. Uh, and then among all the Gentiles... Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. The Gentiles. Yep. Among all the Gentiles, for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called, again, there's the inclusio, we would call it, like right. these parentheses from the very beginning, called to the end of this paragraph, called, and again, to belong to Jesus Christ. Can we, right there in verse 5, for the sake of his name too, right? Mm. Like, why all of that? Exactly. For, for whose for sake? For what, for what purpose? For his glory, yes. right? For the all name of, of Jesus' sake, right? Um I just want to have a better house in Rome. (laughs) (laughs) Too bad. No, that's not what it's about. (laughs) Just like Psalm 23, he leads us in paths of righteousness. Why? For For his his name's name's sake, sake, right? This is all through the Bible. So Mm -hmm. Paul, make sure he puts that in there. Mm -hmm. It's all about his glory. The gospel of God. (laughs) Don't be mistaken. Of God. (laughs) Right. Of his son for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in verse 7 again, uh, the third time we hear this, uh, to to the believers in Rome who are called... Yeah. Now to be saints, mm-hmm. to be set, called to be set apart, to yeah. be saints, yeah. to be holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, grace and peace, grace which and is peace, Jewish Gentile ways of greeting, mm-hmm. grace, peace. Yeah, yep. right. Peace being a very Jewish way of greeting yeah, each other, shalom. and grace being yeah. more what the Gentiles would be used to. Mm-hmm. So all over, just the introduction. Yeah. 
yeah. we, we see, okay, he's talking to a split, divided audience, mm-hmm. but it's, he's, he's going to unify them. Yeah. He's going to unify them in Christ. Christ is going to unify them. Right. But he's going to remind them of what they have in yeah. Christ, mm-hmm. uh, of both being a Lord and Master, but also the Messiah King who has been prophesied about. Yeah. So bringing it all together. Um, there's a beautiful prayer of Thanksgiving. We could probably keep talking. I mean, even <laughs> 16 and 17 are, are wonderful. That's, that's, yeah, that's are. the whole, I'm not ashamed of the yes. gospel, you know, and that's when, that's kind of his springboard then into his beginning of, of talking yeah. about what he's going to talk about is the doctrine and then applied doctrine. Yeah. But for us, we have talked a lot already about just the basics of the book and our excitement for it and how it applies to our lives yeah. even. Um, but in this series, you know, we're going to have, uh, re- questions for reflection, and so we've got two today. I just want to ask you guys these two questions and, and maybe just kind of dig in for a minute, get personal. Like we hadn't already done that enough. But, <laughs> but our first question for reflection is uh, Paul, who calls himself a slave, a servant of Christ Jesus, has been called or set apart to tell the Gentiles, that was his vocation, to tell the Gentiles about the good news of Jesus. So what is your calling? What is your vocation? It's a funny word. Scott and I were just talking about it the other day. Like I have a harder time with this specific calling, right. like this is what you're exactly supposed to do at this exact time, at that yeah. exact place. Um, sure. Yeah. Mine's a little more generic. We'll get to it. Uh, but how, so what is your calling? And then how, how can you display your servanthood to Jesus hmm. in that calling? Hopefully he's the one calling you to it. So, Well, obviously I'm a pastor <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is a calling. That is what I believe to be my calling. I, I think maybe more broadly for me, um, I know that and and we'll get into more in the later part of the book with with gifts. Paul does talk about gifts and how we use them in the church. I think one of my gifts is preaching, teaching, sharing the word of God with people, and mm-hmm. expounding upon that and helping apply it to to people's lives. Um, totally agree. I believe that that is a calling that God has given me. And so, look, if if tomorrow he were to call me to not be a pastor at Eastridge, if that were to happen, right? Mm-hmm. If you were to say, well, I, I want to want you to go somewhere else and do something. I want you to be a, a plumber somewhere, whatever. If I did that. I believe that would still be my calling to mm-hmm. to help people know God's word and to right. share it with people and yeah. teach in, in whatever way, right? I don't yeah. think that would ever change. So for me, I would say that's kind of the most specific for me. Now, obviously, that fleshes out as being a pastor um, at this point and hopefully indefinitely. So, mm-hmm. um, and I love I love that I have been called to do that. Now, how does that work and displayed in a servanthood to Jesus? Um, well. Gracious, I hope that I'm. I always am able to have the humility of Paul, honestly, yeah. to see myself that way. Mm-hmm. As a, we all are servants of Jesus. Um, so you even, don't you don't have any like podcasts coming out where you're going to be selling these for <laughs> selling the gospel. For, yeah, 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 no. Um, yeah. I mean, really, a, a minister. The term minister really means to kick up dust in the Greek. Like it's someone <laughs> right. who like is just d- serves and, right. and, and works mm-hmm. for the gospel. And I always want to see myself that way. I think I do see myself that way. And uh, for me, I think it's just um, always wanting to, as best I can, use that gift to serve the church. Yeah. And like I said, whether that is vocationally forever, forever or not, um, Gosh, prayerfully, I, I want that to be something that mm-hmm. that gift that God has given me is offered back to Him in humble mm-hmm. service right. to just say, God, please use this right. to glorify for Your yeah. namesake, right? To glorify Yourself um, and to edify yeah. the church. I don't know that I can comment on your calling, but I can at least encourage you in it. Um, I don't think you could not share the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it was Martin Lloyd Jones. Martin Lloyd Jones maybe quoting Spurgeon. So I know you're a Spurgeon fan. Help me mm-hmm. if I get this wrong. I think he said, uh, Lloyd Jones, uh, quoting Spurgeon, said, "If you can do anything else but preach the gospel, yes. do it." Right. Because oh, yeah. if yeah. you you can preach the gospel, you're going to preach the gospel. Yeah. You're going to be aflame with it, right? right? Like right. you can't help it. Yeah. yeah. So if you can do it, if you have it, then go do something else. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What What about you? What do you, what do you feel a like calling vocation? Uh, I think my calling is teaching. Just. Mm-hmm. Um, Wherever I am in whatever capacity, sometimes it's kids, sometimes it's students, sometimes it's adults, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's in a small group setting, sometimes it's from stage. Like, Mm -hmm. I I feel like that's what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a there's a place I can't remember which epistle where Paul's just talking about how his calling is to make clear Mm -hmm. the gospel, like just to to 
to make it clear. Make known the mystery of the gospel, yes. which I am an ambassador in James. Yes, and Ephesians. so just to Ephesians. make it clear. Yes, I knew it was one of the epistles. Yeah. Um, just to make it clear, and I feel like that is what he has called me to do. So mm-hmm. no, no matter what yeah. it is, like if it's children, just to take it down to that level. If it's students, to that level. Adults, yeah. whatever. So I feel like that's what he has called me to do. Man, I, you again, do it well. You do. Like that <laughs> oh, is such thanks. a gift. I agree, You're a great totally. storyteller. I mean, I think that is a gift. Right. right. And to be able to use, like just the way that you can teach through story telling and engaging like that that makes it clear yeah it's a real good yeah Yeah. yes it's amazing so yeah yes and then um i forgot the next part of how you submit it to jesus how do you yes that is uh just making sure that my own ideas my own wants my own um platforms Mm -hmm. uh are not something that i go after yeah i just allow allow god to make that happen uh, um because you could teach anything like you can go teach math and make it the same. Well, I don't know about math, but whatever no, your subjects are. Yeah, you can teach something I else. I was really good at math in school, but okay. it's not my favorite <laughs> yeah. thing to teach. I'm saying you're a gifted teacher in that, that you could probably teach anything. You could go to marriage counseling or whatever. Like you could teach those things, but right. you've submitted it to the gospel. I'm going to exactly. preach, teach, exactly. make things clear. Yeah, That's, That's good, a good man. thought too. Just as teachers, it is... It's always a temptation to want to kind of highlight or emphasize your own maybe thoughts on things right. and opinions on things. Right. But just I think a way that we like Paul kind of be continue to be servants mm. of the Lord is really just to you know to hold that right. in front of ourselves and make sure that this is speaking. You yes. know what I mean? And, and to mm-hmm. use it to unify yes, instead of divide yes, or instead right. of to well I think blah blah blah. And so you it's people not need my to... words is not my opinion. Right. I, if there's anything controversial, I hope it's just. What the Word of God really says. Exactly. Yeah. And we can talk about let that, it, but yeah. let the Word of God speak. Yeah, let it speak. speak. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, mine would be generic in that uh, I feel like the calling would be to stand in the middle of chaos and try to help bring clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So there was a, the, I felt some clarity there. I felt some teaching part of that. Um, but really in, in, in many environments, you know. Advocate. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, d- using diplomacy, like mm-hmm. hearing all perspectives and helping right. uh, dogmatic folk hear the other sides of the, yeah. like, here's why people believe this way. Here's why right. these people believe this way. And that's why, you know, we'll search our hardest for the truth and wrap our minds around that truth when we get there. But until that point, let us not be so arrogant as to say we've got it figured out. Exactly. To look at the different pieces and I understand have... each other, you know, in their perspectives. Yes. So. I've seen you do that with... Um... Whether it's just more like in business ways, but I've seen you do that in, with theology. I've seen you do that in many, many ways. I, you are yes. that is a gift, it absolutely. Is. That God yes. gives you. I've said that to other people. Yeah, but you're able to see both sides of things well mm-hmm. and help people even reconcile how you might see it differently. But how can we meet in the middle with mm-hmm. some sort yeah. of? I don't even want to say compromise, but just understanding of. What, what's the real goal here? I think you're good at that. Yeah. Yes. Like, let's all see the same goal yeah. and go after that together. Right. Yeah. I, I would hope that, I think that's what Paul's doing here with unity. Right. Hey, there's weaker and stronger. There's different opinions, mm-hmm. but but what we can't agree on, let's agree on that. Yeah. Let's focus on that and, and live and have fellowship together. <laughs> you know, although you might see it this way and you might see it this way. Yeah. Because I think the Jews are going to wind up still doing some Jewish stuff <laughs> yeah. after he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and the Gentiles are going to do some things the Jews don't yeah. like, and but yet they're going to live And he's not fellowship. even telling them not to necessarily. Like right. Jews, you can't act Jewish, or Gentiles, you can't do some of the <laughs> right. things. Like, but the things we agree on. But from yeah. Romans 12, and, and there's certain things we have to agree on. You, Live yeah. at peace right. yep. with all men. Yep. So, yeah. He says, if you consider that a sin, then it's a sin. Right. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but don't tell him it is if it's not. That's you know. exactly yeah. right. That, yeah. that may be a hold. That, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yes. Question so two. Good. Question two. Oh, we are good. All right. One of the reasons Paul writes to the church in Rome is to help them become unified. Two groups of differing opinions were not in unity. Paul points to the gospel as the only means by which we come together. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. no other, there's no real solution to disunity other than the gospel. Right. You can patchwork some stuff, you're going to get, the, but unity comes with the gospel. So what is one way that you personally can promote peace in your church congregation or in your small group or in your family, circle of friends? How can you promote unity? Peace. I mean, I'm trying to think of a way to say it that's not... I don't just want to give a churchy answer. You know, Jesus and cliches, obviously, but <laughs> I don't know a better answer other than just to say, for me, again, and I know my context is a little different than most watching, um, being a pastor, but for sure, um, I do believe the Word of God, It it's like it's divisive in one way because it obviously points to Jesus and Jesus alone as right. Savior and things like that. Right. Like we have to make a choice of who we're going to follow. 
but it is unifying in the church and edifying to the church. If we would all, and I think, again, what Paul is doing in Romans, if we would all submit ourselves to the word over our own personal opinions and freedoms and liberties, mm-hmm. right? Because Paul talks about that yeah. in, in right. and Corinthians. He talks to them a lot about this. Like, it's really peace over liberty here. It's exactly. it's me being willing to concede some personal preference mm-hmm. yeah. to in order to be unified and in order to love and just to... Good gracious. Yeah, I think if we all just had more of a, a mindset of, I just want to serve you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to help you and edify you. And it's not about me getting something that I want. Um, so I think I, I I think I as a pastor can promote that just to lift again, lifting up the word and, and always encouraging our people to and let's see what the word says and let's humble ourselves right. mm-hmm. um to a place of again, first verse of Romans, Paul is servant yeah. of Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. None of us are above that. Yeah. Being servants. Right. So that's good. Yeah. There's a phrase in James that I love that says mercy triumphs over judgment. Mm-hmm. And so um, like what you were talking about, being able to see multiple sides of mm-hmm. something and not just going, you know what, I'm in my own little Christian box and this is this is right and, and you're wrong and mm-hmm. and really trying to see from someone else's perspective. Right. I feel like one of the things that I have have recently, probably in the last couple of years started doing is just reading different opinions, Mm -hmm. um, or different ways that people see, like I I read a book, uh, by a homosexual guy who is talking about how the church can minister to same sex attracted Mm -hmm. population, like how, how that can work and what that looks like. And, and I'm reading a book right now by N.T. Wright about the Anglican faith, just because I read a lot of Anglican. It's like, what, what are the distinctives of the Anglican faith? Why am I drawn to that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so just, just really, um, trying to understand, other people, where they come from, because That's good. Christ mm-hmm. is not like Christ doesn't hate this group of people, mm-hmm. right? He loves the yes. people, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, and so, trying to understand where they're coming from, so that you can relate to them, so mm-hmm. that you can share the gospel, so that you can just love them and show them mercy, mm-hmm. because mercy triumphs over judgment. Paul yeah. was yeah. a master at that. He is. Yeah. If you read Acts, and if you yes. all, most of his being able to see kind of what you're saying, being able to see both sides of certain things, right. the Jew and the Gentile part, because he is a Roman citizen and a Jewish That's Pharisee. That's exactly hey, He's right. got a lot, yes. you know, that I, he, he is God's chosen instrument for this yeah. kind of thing. Right. To be and, able to promote peace in right. groups. And he defaults to, and it's his kindness yes. that draws us to repentance. Yes, <laughs> it's that's right. It's the kindness yes. of the Lord. Lest we forget this. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. What about you? Man. I, you know, I probably, uh, just your answers. I'll use your answers. <laughs> um, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that's it. To, to promote unity, uh, by even just by definition, it's like things that don't agree. Right. If everyone just agreed, that's uniformity. Right. And that's right. not what we're going right. for here. We yeah. don't want everybody to look the same. Exact, I mean, exactly. God didn't create us that way. Right. Um, but he did create us to be unified. Yeah. And so I think just unity is, is setting down some of my preferences, some of my yeah. liberties in order not to offend the brother. Yeah. Um, but then not to hold judgment. Uh, we'll, we'll read all through here. We'll, we'll hear about judgment and contempt. I mean, like yeah. the Jews mm-hmm. were being judgmental. The Gentiles were being holding contempt. Like, I can't believe you do that. Right. Um, and, and, and the, the, the word to us and what I would try to do is in promoting peace, we see, see the different perspectives, advocate sometimes, advocate for those who are weaker and go, because, you know, maybe I'm in one of those camps, but to be able to go, okay, there's oppression here. I, I just got to speak. I got to speak up to it. I right. speak about it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just coming off of uh, Martin Luther King's holiday. And, right. you know, that was one of the things like if you if you're silent, then you're complicit, mm-hmm. you know, and. So there's ways in which we can speak into the, the, the background and all that I've had and the, the experiences I've had. There's a group of people who would listen if I just spoke, mm-hmm. and sometimes I choose to be quiet. So that's not stirring the pot. That's not kicking up dust, but it is. Yeah. It's, it's saying, hey, here's where we have come from. Here's the perspective. Right. But here's a whole other perspective that we, we, didn't, that we never understood. Right. Let's have a conversation about that and find yeah, unity. Absolutely. So Paul tells the Philippians, his joy is made complete in their unity. Yeah. In their in their loving one another, putting down selfish ambition and mm-hmm. being like minded and one in spirit and purpose, right? right. Like mm-hmm. that completes Paul's joy. <laughs> you know? Like this is what his minister's yeah. heart. And you talk about this. This is a pastoral letter, and yeah. mm-hmm. that's his pastor's heart for them. I think yeah. for the Romans too to be unified. And I like yeah. that you said that it's not uniformity. Mm-hmm. There's exactly. differences, and that's exactly, okay. But yeah, unity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So as you guys read this uh, with us, we I, I hope you just hear Jesus all over it. Um, we're going to talk a lot about Paul, but he's a servant of Christ, right. Jesus. And so we hope you hear Jesus. 
Uh, we hope you're affected by Jesus. We want you to be praying to Him as you read through Romans, and and text, email us, uh, put some stuff in the comments, whatever. Let us know how we can help you on this journey. We, we're going to learn something from you when you share things with us, so let us know. Uh, we, we might even share some of your stories. Like, yeah. We yeah. want to be in this thing together. We want to see unity in the church, unity in the churches yeah. of Rome and Newton County, whatever, yeah. wherever across the world. One uh, encouragement I want to give, too, is just to be there to hear the messages each week. This is a this is a hard series to just hear one mm-hmm. or two and not really get the full four chapter context of this particular one. Especially like if you heard chapter three and didn't hear chapter <laughs> four, like the end of chapter three or four, yeah. it's going to be so off. Right. So, mm-hmm. man, please if you can just make an effort to to hear all the messages um, yep. to, to help you get a full picture of Paul's yeah. and he's read really it. Really building arguments here. Yeah, yeah. just read yeah. it. Yeah. Just be in it. Yes. The, the word of God is alive, mm-hmm. and He speaks. From his word, like we saw tons of different theologians who just, from reading Romans, Mm -hmm. had a whole, like they just, their whole lives, their whole life was changed. And so read the word, (laughs) just jump in and read Romans. And and let it affect you that same way. Let's do this journey together. So uh, eastridge.church slash Romans, that'll be your gateway to all this stuff. Uh, Join us on the podcast every week as we, you know, take what we heard on Sunday and apply it to our lives on Monday and uh, and that's it we'll uh, we'll see you guys next week thank you